Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is James, Oaks Performance Solutions again. We're now going to discuss the DPF, diesel particulate filter, for these 3 liter TDI V6 engines, like an RQ5 here. I have our old parts removed. They're sitting on top of the engine here for nice visual demonstration. This thing is actually a maintenance service item. They do go bad, They're usually right around between 100, 180,000 miles. Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche set these as a maintenance item at 140,000 miles. I get a ton of calls about these every day for people with issues, DPF lights, other problems related to these engines because of this. These cars are getting up there in mileage. They have problems with the DPF. I have the funny banana in the tailpipe joke here because these things get clogged up and you'll notice reduced power worse fuel economy warning lights on the dash with a whole bunch of fault codes associated stored in the engine control unit so this video is going to go over explaining the dpf along with the ad blue system the ser secondary catalyst reduction a lot of the sensors that are involved in these components we're also going to show removing and replacing it and then the third thing we're going to show is how to reset set the values inside the engine control unit with a VCDS so that way you can replace this and continue driving the vehicle as you normally would. We have an exhaust company that we work with that sells an aftermarket exhaust system for these. They're called NAT Performance. They would replace all of this. I'm going to only show replacing this part and also removing and replacing this part here then how to reprogram it so that way you can continue driving the vehicle. These things really clog up sadly. The DPFs to get full they don't work properly anymore. They're there's a lot of sensors and things going on with this, as you can see here. First, you have the main oxygen sensor. This is the most vital sensor for not only tuning, but then just normal engine operation. Because this is a wideband oxygen sensor. It's a six pin oxygen sensor. As you can see, little black, little nasty. That is really the sensor that we need as far as tuning goes. And then just normal driving. That is the most vital one. And it's always the first sensor off the back of the turbocharger because the turbocharger bolts to here. It's not just a banana. There's the oxygen sensor. Then we have this sensor. It's this gray box, and it's the second big sensor after the oxygen sensor. This one is an NOx sensor, or NOx sensor. The actual abbreviation stands for oxides of nitrogen, because diesels produce a ton of oxides of nitrogen emissions in the exhaust system. This measured after it comes out of the turbo, but before it goes into the DPF. That's actually going to be cleaned by the AdBlue system that no owner ever likes that I've ever talked to for these cars. They need a before measurement. That's what this sensor does and this thing plugs right in then we have this sensor here with the orange connector it's not really orange because it's very dirty this is an exhaust gas temperature sensor kind of important for after the turbocharger but before the dpf there's another exhaust gas temperature sensor right here for after and we have some metal pipes come off right here that's for the dpf differential pressure sensor it's actually this black box over here so it's this sensor here. It has some rubber hoses going to these pipes so that way it can measure how full the DPF is. Then we have an exhaust gas temperature sensor after. This one has a black connector. There's a ton of things going on here. We just straight replace this because our car had fault codes for the DPF regeneration frequency and DPF uh, substrate missing or cracked. We just put a whole new one in there, done with it. We live in an area where we're required to have it so we just replace it, put another one in there, follow the rules. After the DPF, it actually connects to this flange here, which goes down. The AdBlue injector here sprays AdBlue through the pipe into this cat looking piece over here, the SCR, secondary catalyst reduction. It reduces or splits nitrogen atoms and the oxygen atoms. So that way it's not harmful to the environment. A lot of people don't like this system. I don't really blame them. It was an afterthought for the Germans. They really didn't design it to be there. It is not a very good system. These things clog up. They fill the whole thing full of ad blue and then it just doesn't work properly. I get calls about this almost on the daily. The customers are having a problem with these. We're gonna go through and talk about how to recode these systems after we replace them resetting the ad blue talking about that with the vcds i think i'll have to make into a whole separate video but i just wanted to show these parts because these are what we replaced on this car these are very problematic parts i wanted to show the proper way to replace these keep it working the way it should be there's also aftermarket exhaust systems this video will encompass this quick explanation how to remove these parts replace them with new ones which is just put everything back with new stuff the way it was before then how to reset the values want to make sure we cover this because this is a constant thing i get calls about all the time.
So we're gonna be replacing the DPF on our new shop car Q5. It's a pretty car we got recently. I wanted to go over that. It is buried in there, but it's actually pretty easy to get to. So we're gonna first pull this big engine cover off. The DPF is this big thing back here. That big sectional pipe. Ours is bad. We're going to put a new stock one in there. This is one of the things that you're going to run into when you buy one of these cars. It looks tucked in there, but it's really not that bad. In about an hour, we're going to have this out pretty fast. The whole bar comes off, all the sensors, everything get disconnected, and then there's stuff on the bottom. Another item on the long list of stuff that will fail for these cars, getting up there in mileage. This one in particular has 170,000 miles on it. We're gonna cover how to remove that. First, we're gonna start off with taking this big brace off. Disconnecting that sensor, moving a couple things. Then we get to disconnecting all the electric connectors. There's an oxygen sensor here. Kind of hard to see around this pipe. This is the first big sensor that is vital. Have to have that one. Then there's the NOx sensor here. This goes up and over to that box right there where the plug is. Moving back, there's more temperature sensors. There's this temperature sensor. It's got a wire that goes all the way over here next to the oxygen sensor. There's another one back here. That one comes over, it's got another wire. A ton of different temperature sensors and things to remove, disconnect to get this thing out of here. There's also a DPF differential pressure sensor. This thing that has to have the hoses loosened, be able to take it off. I'm gonna also go and remove the turbo inlet, give myself a little more room to get to the lower pipes, uh, like the nuts for the lower pipe. So we shall see how it goes. taking a couple things off. I'm taking off the big cross brace that goes across the top here. We're working on getting the DPF loose. A lot of the connectors, this orange exhaust gas temperature sensor goes over there by the coolant tank. Down there, disconnects, pulls right out. Oxygen sensor comes out of that hole right there. This one looks kind of crusty and black. Probably gonna have to replace this thing. In fairness, it has 170 some odd thousand miles on it. It's probably a little worn by this point. The other exhaust gas temperature sensor, this burgundy one, sitting right next to the electric connector for that. When we move over here to this side of the DPF, there's a hose there for the DPF differential pressure sensor. It's a lot to say. Along with there's an exhaust gas temperature sensor down here. This is the DPF differential pressure sensor. The rubber hose goes to this thing. It's only the one, but that just comes right off. This is the wire for the exhaust gas temperature sensor that's much farther down. It actually connects over here in this rat's nest to that one right there, right by where the EGR temp sensor is, fuel pressure regulating valve, all this sort of stuff. Going to get to, it's all right there. Moving on, there's the nuts that hold the DPF to the lower exhaust pipe. They're 12 millimeters. You can see probably the one. There's the 
12 millimeter nut. There's a one above it that you get from the top as well. And then there's one on the bottom. You move to the bottom, start disconnecting stuff, be able to clear some more room and take things out. We're replacing both the upper and lower portion. I would rather take the lower part off before we start yanking on this top part. The only thing holding the top part in after those two nuts are on the side over there is the three nuts over here that hold it to the back of the turbo. Car lifted up in the air, it's on jack stands on the drive on lift, so that way we have the wheels off because we gotta do a whole bunch of work to this thing. I wanted to show you the bottom for removing the exhaust. Working from the middle of the car back, there's a center exhaust clamp that's all rusty and crusty and nasty. We're gonna have to cut that off. Then there's these nuts for where it joins to the center section. They're probably 12s as well. Then actually, my car doesn't have this hanger properly attached anymore, surprisingly. We have Add blue injector needs to be removed. That way we can get this pipe out. It's a little Allen, and then it's a V-band style clamp, and it comes right off. I was telling you guys that one of the DPF nuts, you get it from the top. It's that 12 up there. And then for this mid pipe as well, there's a spring section that holds it to the side of the trans. We gotta loosen it there as well. It's probably a 13. That way, that rear section. This center section all comes out. I'm gonna actually take this big cross brace off. This thing is a whole bunch of 18 millimeter bolts to get it all off. The car has to be off the tires to remove this because this is structural. Don't mind all the oil and nastiness all over the bottom here. The car's got a pretty nasty oil leak, which we gotta address later. Should point out the front bolts, it's a 14 millimeter triple square, it's quite big. Gotta take that off, get a little more access up in there. We can take it all loose. got the mid pipe out you can see the bottom of the dpf that stud that sticks down that you got to loosen from the bottom it actually broke on me that's to be expected it's 12 millimeter the add blue injector sits kind of about here it's gone this hanger wasn't really on there very well at all it wasn't bolted this is the exhaust hanger it wasn't even attached to the car the way it's supposed to be the whole center section i just removed all this one assembly trying to make my life easier just to make it easier for everybody, we're gonna take the center of the cowl wall apart. We're gonna take this weather stripping off, take the panel off the back. There's like a 10 millimeter nut there and a battery support bar that goes across the back. We should probably disconnect the battery in the back for safety measures. We're in the trunk now. We'll lift this up, lift this plastic tray out. The battery is underneath here, some locking tabs. I gotta take the spare tire out real quick. So now we need to disconnect the negative battery terminal, which is off to the right. Disconnect that positive side too, so that way I can slide it down on there a little farther. Looks like one of the previous owners put some aftermarket stuff in. Get this disconnected so that way we can safely take apart the cow. The reason why you want to disconnect the battery is actually because of this power junction box right here. Battery power comes in through here, so you obviously don't want all this stuff that I've already loosened to short out. It's a bunch of 10 millimeters and then a couple 13s. The little ones there and there are 10s, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 13s. All this stuff gets loosened, moved out of the way, so that way we can make room. The brake hose right down here, this one, it's really hard to see. That one gets disconnected. You can also see it better on this side. That's where the rubber comes through. And then the whole thing pulls right out. Super convenient. We pulled the cow wall section out. So that way it's a nice big gaping hole and DPF will slide right out of there. Now all the room in the world to clean all the leaves out of here. Woohoo!
Yay. We're now in the car after replacing the DPF. A couple things that are important. We're gonna pan over here to the instrument cluster. Coolant temperature's warm. Oil temp, 185. If you can't see oil temp, there's a setting you can change for the VCDS to make it so you can straightforward the engine has to be warmed up parking brake has to be set everything has to be closed off like you drove the car out around the block we're gonna open up our vcds select control module as you can see it's not running perfectly well because it's still a little upset we're gonna go into o1 engine scan for fault codes thermal management's a little upset right now clear that we're gonna go over here to basic settings go up here to here we're going to select service regeneration of particulate filter there's also a couple other values in here for the dpf that are kind of important resetting learned values of particulate filter learned values of different pressure sensor particulate filter tests we can run as well the big one after replacing the dpf is to go service regeneration of particulate filter you got to sit here and run this test this test can actually take 45 minutes of just sitting here running with everything up at operating temperature to clean out the dpf if you have a dpf that is needing regeneration you can try running these test plans try and clean it out to prolong the life of it overall this is what we're going to do to go and clean everything out run all these tests and get the engine control unit happy with us again guys and girls this concludes the dpf replacement video for this three liter tdi v6 q5 most all the other cars are pretty similar the a6 a7 a8 q5 they're all very much the same you gotta take the cow wall out to get the dpf out put in a new one we replace all the sensors because they would get old nasty and throw full codes most of the time you can swap the sensors over bigger suvs like the toreg q7 cayenne those vehicles it's much easier it's on the bottom of the vehicle just lift it up and get it on jack stands or ramps and you can remove it all put in new stuff in there go through the same procedure it's pretty straightforward we have an aftermarket exhaust supplier you can use as well nap performance they sell wonderful exhausts just live in an area where we have to have a dpf legally we're required to say that the aftermarket systems work but we're required to have it so this concludes the video if you have any questions suggestions things you'd like us to cover we're going to be covering a lot with these engines and with these cars i'm probably going to do a q7 video but that'll be a little later down the road i really like these cars this is one of the second biggest problems that our customers have because it typically goes in order of ad blue problems dpf problems egr problems the next video we're going to do is talking about the ad blue system because it's such a common problem and it's actually one of the reasons we started this company then we're going to do the egr but the egr is going to be tied into a whole bunch of stuff because it's in the valley of the engine it kind of looks like you're doing open heart surgery you just have to tear the whole top of the engine apart to get to it it's a ton of work that's going to be a multiple part video series talking about all the issues with the egr system in the valley of the engine along with all the other components around it that video series will be coming up here shortly the ad blue stuff will be up next these are the things that we talk about on this channel a lot of other companies don't have these cars don't live with them they don't actually repair them this is showing our technical expertise that we have for these vehicles these videos are shot in a situation similar to what our customers experience so backyard series for the three liters try and correlate to what our customers are going to see so that way they can handle these problems themselves or at least have a very educated shop that can watch our videos and help out a ton try to prolong the life of these wonderful absolutely amazing vehicles as always we have our tuning boats performance solutions come by a tune enjoy your vehicle thank you